tonight, a mother who grew up in the lap of luxury in Los Angeles leaves her children behind. Wave bye-bye to your Prada. <laughs> and visits a Southern California city where kids are a heartbeat away from tragedy. There's a lot of drugs around here. I remember holding his hand, and it's still being warm. This is what you pray to God as a mom you never have happened. She will meet incredible people of all ages who are fighting to save young lives. OK. I'm depleting my future, but I am not depleting the future of the kids. And in the end, they will change the way she sees the world. Have no regrets and make every moment count. It's not about what you have. It's about who you have in your life. When she reveals herself as... <laughs> Angels everywhere. <laughs> the Secret Millionaire. I'm Hillary DeCesar. I'm 43. I grew up in Bel Air down in Los Angeles, and I live in Danville, California. Hey! I'm a single mom, and I have three kids, Derek and Danny, who are 14, and then Rosie, who is 10. Being a mom is the greatest pleasure I've ever had in my life. I am the CEO and co-founder of Everloop. I made my first million when I was 32 at a technology company here in the Silicon Valley. It only spurred me to do more. I wanted to see what else I could do. Being a safe social network for kids, how do we display that? Technology is out there in such a positive way, but who's really looking after the kids? Being a mom really inspired me to help become advocates for these kids online. I chose to become a secret millionaire because you always talk about what's your purpose in life. You know, what are you really here for? And I've always wanted to be a role model for my kids, to be able to show them that I'm actually going out and making a difference in people's lives means so much to me. Hillary's mother will stay with her children while she becomes the secret millionaire. She must relinquish all the things that define her, her cosmetics, jewelry, designer clothes, and accessories. She will tell the people she meets she's part of a documentary about volunteering. We're very, very fortunate, and we have almost everything at, like, our fingertips. So I think that this entire experience will have a very humbling effect on her, having to actually go out and work and experience the lives of others that aren't quite as fortunate. It'll be good for her to see. Wave bye-bye to your Prada. <laughs> There's so many different things I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling nervous about where I'm going. I'm feeling sad because I'm gonna be leaving my kids. Just a lot going through my head. Hillary is leaving her gated community to begin her journey. Her destination, Long Beach, California. Just 30 miles from the glitz of Beverly Hills, Long Beach is a world away from the bright lights of Los Angeles. Thank you. There are over 4,000 homeless people in Long Beach. 14% of them are children. I'm actually feeling more vulnerable than I was this morning. I'm out in the middle of a city I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> this is intense. I complain at home about my house being messy. Oh my God. This is, I mean, this is dirty. I want to be out getting to know the people. The thought of, of just leaving this house makes me happy. <laughs> more about the neighborhood? Do you like it? Yeah. They calm down a lot. Are there a lot of police that patrol this area now? Yes. Or? Yes. yes. Yes? That's good. 
What's your name? Antonio? I'm Hillary. Do you like your neighborhood? Not that. Why don't you like it? Because there's a lot of people in the street. There's a lot of drugs around here? Yes. I hope I get to see you a lot. Thank you. See you later. I grew up about 30 miles north of here, and I've never been down here. So I'm, I'm trying to think positively about the next five days, but that doesn't counterbalance what I'm feeling about <laughs> this, this place where I'm, where I'm going to be staying. At one point, I'm just like, how, how, how do I get myself out of this? <laughs> and then you realize, it's a commitment that you've made. You know, it's just a lot. It's a lot to take in in one day. But that's not going to break me. Hillary de Caesar is struggling with her decision to leave her family and wealthy lifestyle to become the secret millionaire in Long Beach, California. that there was a beautiful library right down the road and I thought I might go there and check it out and get on the internet and see if there's organizations that I can go look at today. The Long Beach Public Library and Love in the Mirror are joining up for the second year in a row to collect personal hygiene items for homeless youth in Long Beach. This organization, Love in the Mirror, sounds really interesting. I'm going to go over and give a hand. Love in the Mirror was founded by eight-year-old Jonas Corona and his mother, Renee. Hi there. I'm Hillary. Hi, I'm Renee. Renee. I'm Jonas's mom. So yeah. nice to meet you. So what are you doing here? Love in the Mirror is an organization that helps homeless and needy kids. We're going to sell some stuff uh -huh. for precious lambs. It's a homeless school. And then um, after we do that, we're going to make some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And then after we do that, we're going to go to the park. So, Mom, how do you feel about Jonas? Very proud of him. Love in the Mirror, he started um, when he was six years old. Six years old? And he's been volunteering and helping feed the homeless since he was four. How do you think that Jonas even got the idea to do this? Well, we used to go uh, once a month and feed the homeless. One day when he was feeding, there was some kids without their parents in line, and he got really sad and was just really shocked. and. So he asked if he could help, and I called all the shelters around here, and you have to be 10 to help. And he didn't want to stop, so he decided to just try to start his own thing. Sandwich time, sandwich okay. time. Peanut butter is one of my favorites. Do you like peanut butter? Yeah. Do I'm trying like? to uh -huh. get my friends, my cousins, and my family inspired so they sh could help. I think it feels good if you make other people feel good it does so when he starts talking about love in the mirror and where he wants to take it it means a lot of commitment from you yes i was in my first year of law school when he actually started love in the mirror so um it was a lot of work you know going to school and doing this so i finished my first year and uh -huh. took a break how many do you think we made oh uh... you put nine you i put nine that's 18. you got it time you said. you're on it Oh, who taught, 63. who taught you oh, that? Who taught you what you just My did? My dad. 63, yeah. I, I did it. If you think about what normal eight-year-olds are doing, they're out playing. And he is willing to give up his time, his playtime, to come and do this because it means that much to him. Usually when we hold drives, we give back to organizations that help kids. And somebody referred us to Precious Lamb, and it's actually a preschool for homeless kids. We're going to do the beanbag dance. Oh, we have special friends here. Can you guys say hello? Say hi. hi. Do you guys remember Jonas? Hi. I think Jonas brought us some special things. Should we check it out? Look. Hello, Jonas. Hillary Leilani. She's one of the volunteers today. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what do you think of Jonas and what he's doing? I think it's wonderful. He's come before bringing personal hygiene products and books, some snacks and things like that. All of our kids 
are homeless, and so they live in treatment centers and transitional housing, and so a lot of them come without really any toys, and it's so important and special that Jonas brings these things. And I think it's wonderful for them to see somebody that's not that much older than them giving back, so it is definitely very inspiring to see somebody that has a heart for others at such a young age. When the kids all had their teddy bears and they all just came at me, that's true happiness. I mean, you can't beat that. Bye, buddy. Thank you so Bye. much. You're welcome. We're going to a park near the main library. There's a huge homeless community over there. So we're going to go and take the sandwiches over there. Hi. Would you want a sandwich? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm what sorry. is your name? Jonas. Jonas, I'm Jeffrey. Hi. Can I have one for my sleeping friend? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Jonas. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. Want a sandwich? How you doing? Hi. <laughs> thank you. Is this your ideal? Yes, dear. Thank you. Would you like a sandwich? Okay, thank you. Hi. Go on a sandwich? Thank you. I actually stood back and just watched him. Watched this eight-year-old boy talk to people that normally I would just race right on by, and Jonas had no fear. All he cared about was giving a sandwich to someone who was hungry. Because we have one more. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. That's all. So, Jonas, do you think you're going to do this forever? The sacrifices that you're having to make as a family must be really hard. Yeah, we don't really do a whole lot. You know, as long as we have food on our table and roof over our head, like, we're okay. It's a special bond you have with your mom. Mm, yeah. You know what? I've never actually given any food to any homeless person like this in a park. So you inspired me. I'm the CEO of a company that encourages kids to go out and make a difference. And I didn't really realize that I was being hypocritical in saying, hey, kids, go out and make a difference. Then again, what was I really doing to make a difference? Hillary to Caesar, an advocate for children's safety on the internet, was undercover in Long Beach, California as the secret millionaire. Meeting Jonas inspired me. Today, I'm ready to get out there and find some incredible people making a difference. Hi. Oh, hi. I saw your flyer this morning, hi. and I wanted to find out if I could talk to somebody who knows a little bit about New Hope. We're uh, founders, Wayne I'm Wayne. Tornell. Wayne, I'm Hillary. Nice to meet you, Hillary. Susan. Susan. Susan nice to meet you. Well, well, great. We help grieving people find hope and healing. We help anybody who lost somebody, Hillary. Really, just, that's what we Any do. age. Any age. Why did you start this? Well, Sue was a hospice nurse, and so she watched patients die, but what was left was a hole in the family. <laughs> okay. So she started researching grief and, and really began dealing with grief on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We were in a class together, and she explained what she did, and I had to seek her out after the meeting because we had lost our child about 20 years before. There was no one around to uh, help us through that process. And if you've gone through that, you see what it rips the family apart. It's not just the dying, it's what's left. And so that was the start of New Hope. You know, why don't we uh, give you a tour? Okay, I would it, love uh, it. And this is our office. Hi there. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Hi. Hillary. She's a new volunteer. We have programs for little ones. Programs help them with death, dying, burial, cremation. We have books for them, books for adults. We borrowed this room. We share it on Sunday mornings. The Sunday schools are in here, so we really can't do what we want to do. Our dream would be to have our own center where we could put everything up on the walls that would be very therapeutic, but right. um, we, we make do with what we have. We're, we're grateful we're here. Yeah, I think it's true. You know, we have a project that's today we're going to be involved with. I don't know if you have time to... 
I have plenty of time. Fantastic. It will be a very meaningful day for all of us, I know. So I love let's it. get going. All right. Hillary and Sue are on their way to the home of Jose and Jennifer Alonzo and their three daughters. Jose and Jennifer's son, Christian, died in a car accident three years ago. Me personally? They kind of made it seem like... Hey, family. I'm Hillary. Hi, Hillary. This is and Jennifer. Hillary. Jennifer, it's a pleasure. Hi, Jose. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. To meet you. And she's our newest volunteer. Oh, this is this Dominique. Is, uh, Dominique, yeah. how old are you? Five. Five. Yes. Adriana. Uh -huh. Adriana. Hillary. Nice to meet you. And this I'm is Hillary. Sabrina. Hi. Yeah, and you she... girls are how old? 15. 14. 15. I have twins that are 14. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I do. Hillary and Sue are helping the Alonzo family create a memorial garden in their yard in Christian's memory. All of this is one more step of healing with grief. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a place in their home where they can go and have a time of remembrance and know that Christian is honored. So, first of all is to get the stuff cleared and then we can bring everything in and start going. I've got lots of beautiful plants and then we have beautiful load of pea gravel and we'll make a nice path mm -hmm. to a memory bench. Okay. Why don't you share your story sure. with her and, um, and help her to understand the meaning of this special place? It was a regular day. I ended up uh, just leaving for, for work that day, not knowing that that day was going to change our life forever. He played soccer. So we'd get Christian ready for his soccer game. Har was in the driveway. I told my daughter I'd, I'd be back. I'm going to get the ice chest. We ran in the house, and um, when we came out of the house, I found my car down the street, and I went running, not quite understanding what was happening or why my car was there. And um, I guess what happened was he somehow, I don't know, got the car out of gear with the car turned off, and he tried to jump out. And I just remember looking at the car, and I look to the side, and I see Christian. I remember kneeling down and just checking for a pulse. And I remember holding his hand, and it's still being warm. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I have three children, <laughs> and I... And that's when you kind of get to understand that there's nothing that you can do to change it. You know, we're all going through it, so we all have to heal. And the amazing thing about Sue is that she understood that. This is being unfathomable. This is what you pray to God as a mom you never have happened. Well, we I think we're on? ready. Let's come on down. Okay. This is just for you. Yes. This is your place to come to whenever you need to, for whatever reason. This is a gift of love yeah. to yourself, which is really important in your gift, in your journey of healing and grief. So, this is the road that we could take to sit down and find comfort, find healing in the fact that there are so many people out there that care. Today's a day that I'll never forget because a family brought me into their life, shared with me the rawest pain they've ever known. Most of us don't know even how to support somebody else. You feel helpless. When, yeah, that's very, very true. And sometimes it's so uncomfortable that you back away from the people who need the contact the most. Yeah. Well, I have, to, I have to tell you, my grandmother right now has hospice. Oh, so this is wow. near and dear this to... This is very timely yes. for you. Yeah. Have no regrets and make every moment count. And let me just tell you, Hillary, the hearing is the last to go. 
with the patient. They die with their hearing. So when, if she becomes comatose, she will still be able to hear, honey. She will still be able to hear. And uh, nobody needs to talk around her. Right. They talk to her. That's probably hospice will keep reminding you that. To find hope in anything gives you the hope to go on. That's what Sue's providing. Today brought it all home. It's not about what you have. It's about who you have in your life. Hillary de Caesar grew up in the wealthy suburbs of Los Angeles. She's undercover in Long Beach, an industrial city in Southern California, where almost 30% of the population didn't finish high school. Shoestring City Ranch. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Hi there. Hi. Is the person in charge around? Hi, I'm Karen. I'm Hillary. Nice it's, to meet you. It's so good, nice to meet good. you. Welcome to Shoestring City Ranch. Well, How'd you find the place? You. Actually, I drove by your sign. Perfect. I'd love to find A little surprise home. to find a ranch in the middle of the city. <laughs> Just a tad. <laughs> Want a tour? I would love a tour. Okay, super. Karen Thompson founded Shoestring City Ranch in 2009. The ranch keeps local children ages 5 to 21 safe and off the streets and teaches them responsibility by caring for rescued animals. So we can let kids have ranch experience. You know, there's activities that happen in the city as gangs, that kind of thing. So getting the kids out, getting them active, getting them to do something, they become good citizens. If you can help a kid today, those are the people that are going to be just out there making things happen. I they're going to be our leaders. Agree. They're going to be the doctors, the lawyers. They're going to be the, the people that are out there giving back. Good job. We ready to go to work? I'm ready to go okay. to work. Benjamin? Hi. Hi, this Benjamin. This is Hillary. She's one of the girls Hi. that's helping nice us. Nice to meet you. And she's going to help you groom Mo. So when you get with the animals, what does it make you feel like? Well, it makes me feel happy because I'm near an animal that um, I could trust and it, they're loving. Sometimes be a little bit aggressive, but then once you get to know them, they just calm down. Is this your favorite thing to do, come here? Yeah. Yeah? There's nothing more you'd rather nothing do? Nothing more. I used to love um, games, video games, but now I don't. No? So I just got in, I got passion with the animals. You have a passion for the animals? Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, to get ready to go to the ring, we need everybody to listen up. Mary's going to go ahead and lead us out, so she's going to get the horses set to go. Hillary, since you're new, you're going to hang in the back with me. Excellent. Purple, are you going to go? He's actually one of the horses that we've uh, rescued here. Uh -huh. He is an ex-race horse. He's kind of hiding. Uh. He's a little shy. He's ouchy because they use drugs to run him at the track. So many of our animals would not have a home. And some of them were abandoned, didn't have homes. So it's kind of like I have a homeless encampment for horses. So with a horse like that, I know you're taking mm -hmm. care of, you know, you said 10 horses plus all these others. How do you how do you keep this all together? I mean, are you personally putting money in? Are yes. you raising money? I mean, how do you do it? This is a completely unique situation because of the fact that it's completely volunteer. There's not a paid director here. There's not a paid position here. All the cleaning is done by hand. All the care is done by hand. The feeding is done by volunteers. But when you don't have enough, you reach into your own pocket. I'm depleting my future but I am not depleting the future of the kids, so it's going to even out. Yeah. I'm optimistic. Think, think positive, they say, right? <laughs> when you hear from Karen what she's doing and, the, and how she's giving back to these kids and putting them ahead of even her retirement, you start to realize what is true selflessness. Hey there. I'm Hillary. I'm Taylor. It's nice to meet you. Karen's off doing something. Is there any chance I could help you? Yeah. So how long have you been working here? I've been working here about 10 years. What's what's your reason I for love doing it. it? You is, love it. You love the animals? It's my passion. I had a rough childhood. And every Sunday when I'd come here, my parents couldn't yell at me. 
It was my safe haven. I'm gonna cry. It was my safe haven, and um, I grew up with a lot of these animals, and words don't describe how much they mean to you. Not every child's life is the perfect when they're growing up, and I understand that, but, you know, it was just, it was hard. So, actually, when I was 18, um, I moved in with Karen for about seven months. She's the most amazing person, like, I know in my life. She saved me. She's like the mom that my mom never was. Yeah. Even though so many things have changed in my home and it's gotten a lot better, it's still my safe haven from even just high school drama, friend drama, whatever. Karen is a mother to all these kids. They all look up to her. What she's trying to do is just give them hope. And it was just, it was inspiring. Well, I have enjoyed coming here so much. I loved meeting the kids. I loved meeting the additional horses. <laughs> you're so cute, too, and you're terrific. As the night is here and the day is over, it's tough. Hard not to feel homesick. I miss my kids so much, but some of the hardest life-changing experiences are the ones you have to do by yourself. Hillary is making another visit to the New Hope Grief Support Community. Hey! Hi, Sue. Whoa, you can come! I oh. made it. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. What a surprise. I'm so glad. Yeah. Hi, this is a special Hi, person. Dear. Her name is Hillary. And Hi. on a couple days ago, she came by the office to learn about New Hope. Oh, I was just telling the kids and the parents that these plates are very meaningful. It's um, a way that they can get their feelings into their art to help them grieve another step. Okay. We sell them in a, as a silent auction item, and some of the, the plates have raised as much as $500 each. Okay. But I want you to do a plate. Okay. And uh, Wonderful. we're going to squeeze you in. Hillary, the main thing about these plates is that you never get over your person, but you can get through your grief. This plate can be a visual of how New Hope helped. So go ahead, turn it over, and then maybe paint your name on the back. At the end of our painting time, when we finish our plates, then we're going to share our plate with each other and tell a little bit of our story. Hi, Hi Harry. Yes. I have not introduced you to everybody. Forgive me. We have Riley. And Riley, what brings you to New Hope? My dad, uh, he fell off of a ladder while working in his garage. What's it been like for you since then? I know you came to grief group. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a little better because a lot of my friends don't know what I'm going through, so it was good to know like that there were other people mm -hmm. that um, had lost people too. Evan, how about you? Um, my grandpa died. He died of a cancer, multiple myeloma. He had it for a we, Very suddenly. Yeah, he, about like six weeks, we... Oh, yeah. Wow. Right, we just thought he had pneumonia. At the funeral, um, he, I told him, you don't have to get up and talk if you don't want. But he wanted to, and um, there was not a dry eye in the house, I have to tell you that, so... Was that really important to you, to get up and, and say a few words for your grandfather? She's here to do puzzles and to do basketball. He lost an arm when he was nine, but yet he beat me every time at basketball. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Oh. It's nice that we do have memories, though, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's so great how these kids told their stories. You know, no holes barred. What amazes me is Grief pulls us together as survivors. So how do you pay for this? We have about 45% of our income comes from monthly donations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people in lieu of flowers at a memorial will say, please give to New Hope. We're bare bones, you know, when the staffing isn't there, we have to count on the volunteers. I thought it'd be a good idea if we went around and we just shared our plate and 
what it means and explain it to each other. How about we start with Jeremiah? Tell us about your plate. Um, well, uh, I drew how my grandma went to heaven. I drew streets going up, and I said heaven is the way because where she went. I drew an eye with a um, with a tear, and um, it's going to say right here, last tear that falls. It just represents that I'm going to be strong for my family and for myself. Riley, tell us about your plate. This is a plate of a dancing heart. I just drew it because, like, your special person's always in your heart. Jose, talk about your plate to our friends. I drew a bench that represents New Hope dedicated for my son at our home, showing that you could put yourself in the bench and look at the world and the beauty around it. The tree represents our foundation, and what it tells me is that we have to be firmly rooted and have faith and hope. And Hillary. I had the pleasure of spending uh, a couple days with the Alonzo family and helping them with bringing in a memorial garden for their son, Christian. I just decided to do it for him. I saw the love, and that's the symbolic of the heart and the butterfly inside, and it says, love, love for your family, and new hope of what's being brought in and the hope of the future. I thank you for putting all of your love and talent, and you gotta know that when these plates are sitting in someone's home, they're gonna remember your grandma, your grandpa, your dads, your brothers, and your loved one's legacy is going to go on. Thank you for letting us enter your life and walk alongside you in your journey. It's been an honor. Sue is going to the core of all of our fears and helping people through it every day. I think Sue has not only changed my life, she's opened my eyes. When I heard I was coming to Long Beach, I knew it was in Southern California, but I didn't know anything about what it was really like. And the people I met and the stories I heard, they're stories that will always be with me. I'll never forget them. Tomorrow, I get to help people get closer to fulfilling their dreams. It's day number six, and I'm excited to finally let all these wonderful people know why I'm really here. Volunteering has taken on a whole new meaning this week. It, it's not just about writing a check and making a donation. It, it really is about getting to know the people and, and why they're so passionate about what they're doing that really matters. Thanks for coming. Well, absolutely. Come in, come in. Hi, everyone. This is Hillary. Hi. Jonas, it's so good to see you. Hi. What I um, started out this week was to meet somebody who was really making a difference. I wanted to really connect. And I have to say, when I started out, I wasn't expecting to have a real connection with an eight-year-old. When I met you, I didn't tell you everything about myself. I'm actually a successful businesswoman. I am the co-founder and CEO of an internet startup company for kids. And I have something for you today. It is a check for $15,000. There you go, Joan. Continue loving the mirror. 
Hillary de Caesar has already gifted $15,000 to incredible people who are changing lives in Long Beach, California. today unfortunately I can put on cover up <laughs> hi everyone hi. Karen what you've built here it crosses from the kids to the adults to the volunteers everybody admires you respects you I have a real connection to you you are focused on kids helping damaged animals thank you <laughs> and I'm a successful CEO. My company is an internet company for keeping kids safe online. And now you understand why I feel so, so tied with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have a gift for you. <laughs> I have written a check for $50,000. To Shoestring City Ranch. $50,000 means a clean, safe environment for the animals and the children. <laughs> I'm just amazed. And thank you, thank you, Hillary. I just, I can't believe it. Oh, Yay! Bye. Bye. Oh, my goodness. I cannot, can you guys, I cannot even believe this. We were just saying, Come you on. need a desk here. <laughs> Hi. 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 Oh. Hi. It's so nice to see you. It's so great to see you. Hi. 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 How are you? Oh, so good to see you. I wanted to get all of you together because I set out this week to find an unsung hero. And I had the fortune of finding new hope. I think as you get older, <laughs> you go through life so fast. And sometimes you do forget to smell the roses. And you guys have shared with me the ability to do that. Yes, Christian's not here with you, present, but he's all around you. Thank you for coming into our family. People shy away because they don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. But you did. You put your hands to the plow right alongside with us, and we built something beautiful. Hearing your stories and seeing the inspiration that you bring to people, what you're providing is not just a path for grieving. It's a path for them to coexist with life. 
I actually have something I want to tell you. I'm a millionaire, and I oh <laughs> have a gift that I want to give you. And so I have a check here for New Hope Grief Support Community for $75,000. Oh Angels everywhere. Thank you so much. It's a sweetheart. <laughs> this whole experience, just you coming in and meeting us very spontaneously, is such a, a blessing. You know, you're such a, uh, you get it. You have you, no idea what you've just done. No, no. No idea. I've never had anything like this happen to me. There, this is beyond any magnitude of anything. You hear about these kind of things, or you see them, or you read a book, and it's always someone else, but now it's us. Oh, my God. <laughs> Your name's really Hillary? My name's really Hillary. Oh. <laughs> yes. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this experience has touched my heart and truly changed me as a person. It took me getting out of my gated community into an environment that I was incredibly uncomfortable to really allow myself to grow. I'm re-energized. I'm charged up about being a mom, about, you know, the little things, which sometimes we overlook. I'm not going to overlook those anymore.